just what Paris said just seemed to be so wrong. Uh, from what, like from I your said, experience, you know, yeah. I don't know the real workings of the family, except I was always around, you know, I was living with them. And, yeah, wow. And I saw them, you know, all day long and at night and dinner and breakfast. And, okay. You know, so I don't, I don't know. That was a real shock to me. Yeah. Now you, and, and you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that I, I know Paris is very angry right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I don't know if that... Maybe that could be playing into it, too. I, yeah, I just don't know. I yeah. don't know the inner workings. That's been kind of a tumultuous situation. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You know, since Michael's death. Mm-hmm. And I guess now that Paris is going to go live with her mother. So is that, oh, so that's definite then? Well, that or was, that's the... I don't know if it's definite or not. I guess she's still in the hospital. Oh, my. So uh, I know she's having a problem dealing with things, and I sure. feel pretty bad for her when yeah. you talk to her, but, but that's not possible. But she yeah. was always, <laughs> you know, Michael always referred to her as a piece of work. Oh. <laughs> he, that, that was a... That was meant lovingly. Yeah, sure. But she she was a really <laughs> strong-willed yeah. little girl. Okay. She, she was funny. I really enjoyed being around her. She was, <laughs> she was I, as I did with all the kids. The kids were absolutely wonderful. But, yeah. But I really did enjoy being around oh, yeah. her. And, and uh, she, <laughs> she was a very independent little girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> But I, I, like I say, I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah. Paris. I don't know if that's true. Okay. Or not. I, you know, I talked to Grace after Michael died, and she mm -hmm. was obviously just devastated. Oh, sure. And uh, and also the fact that you know she was not with the kids anymore. Oh, right. And right. She was, she just felt awful because she mm -hmm. lost Michael and she lost the kids. And, oh yeah, and she had been uh, with them for so long. That was like her family, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I say, she was in on everything, you know. That everything Michael and I talked about, she was right there. She, oh wow. Uh, you know, Michael wasn't trying to distance himself from her at all. Yeah. So. Huh. And you said that you, you said you were living with them for what was it? Just certain periods of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there are times because, uh, you know, wherever he was, wherever we were, mm -hmm. you know, staying with them. Okay. Time. So you obviously spent very extended periods of time with them. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Uh, the last time I was with them, I was there two weeks, you know. Okay. And in that time, if there is any fissures or any breaks or whatever, they're likely to show up, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> two-week span. Yep. But I just had a wonderful time with the kids and Grace and... Michael, and mm -hmm. you know, I thought we had a great time overall. Yeah. Now on the um, okay, it was good. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my uh, questions here. It's all right. Um, I have, I w wanted to ask you one more question about the trial, and then I wanted to go into a little bit about the Sullivan book. Um, just asking you some general things to yep. cl clarify, and then I was going to go into um, you know some questions I had, and then questions from the fans, if that's still all right with you. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and I, basically, on the trial, um, my you know one of the things I'm noticing a lot right now is is Michael's family and his mother, especially, are under a lot of scrutiny yep. uh, by media, public, and even you know some in the fan base, because um, the fan base is kind of um, split down the middle about whether or not they agree with the trial. Yeah. And uh, I guess I'm, one of the things that I wonder is what what do you think Michael would have said to you if he was able to see this situation going on right now? What do you think he would think about it and what do you think he would think about what's being said about his mother and his family? And Oh, I, I think he would be really upset. Michael would really hate it, you know, that kind of attention. Mm-hmm. In the press, I, I think he would very, be very upset with it. He, you know, he he did have his differences with his family. Oh, sure, but, sure. But he loved them. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that, I, this would be very upsetting for Michael. This whole thing would be yeah. devastating on top of everything else. You know. Okay. Yeah, that's what I. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Was you know because I, I know sometimes when people come out against the family, I my my thoughts are always, at least in my 
personal experience and everybody that I know, yeah. every family has issues. Every family has, you know, disagreements and and differences yeah. and of opinion on different things. And so I, I you know, what obviously. Different? The differences are they're not on TV all the time. Right, exactly. Right, their dirty laundry isn't being aired out on into the public every day. I know. <laughs> yeah, so you know it, it's you know it, and and if people you know if 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 my family or or anybody that I know their family if if different things were put out there, it would it, the way that it would be spun would sound just yeah. as crazy. I know it would. Yeah, it absolutely would. <laughs> It absolutely would. Yeah. So humans, I, are, humans are no damn good anyway. <laughs> They're terrible. <laughs> well, it is, I, I'm beginning to, to to come to your point of view real quickly lately. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like animals so much. Oh, Michael, it, see, Michael did too. Michael loved animals. Yeah, I'm the that, same way. For that very reason. Mm -hmm. you know, Michael grew up in a paranoid world, okay? Oh, sure. Anytime you're a money machine... They're, everybody wants their mitts on it. Mm -hmm. They all want part of what you're what you're making. Sure. And so you never know who your friends are. Oh yeah. Like you know, he would refer to the you know the the uh, people in the music industry as weasels and crooks, and, you know, <laughs> everything else, because he'd been dealing with these people all the time. Oh sure. And uh, and that's the reason he loved animals so much, because the animals' love was unconditional. Yep. Oh yeah. You know, if he was feeling bad. He would go back to Jabbar, his, uh, his his favorite uh, giraffe. Okay. And there were these double flight of stairs that went up, <laughs> so you could you know see his face. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. And uh, so Michael would go up there and he'd hug on him. Ah. And, and see, he raised him from a baby, and, and uh, Jabbar used to fall asleep with his head in Michael's lap. Oh wow. And Michael would feed him with a bottle. Yeah. You know, when he lived over there with his parents. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that's and the same with the llamas. You know, like llamas really loved him. Mm hmm And when his favorite llama died at the ranch, Michael was really upset. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Well, they and they become part of your family. Oh, they were. They absolutely were, and they were a big comfort to Michael. And mm -hmm. like I said, he, you know, he understood that children and animals are a lot alike. They offer mm -hmm. unconditional love. Yeah. They don't care if your clothes are tattered or if you're ugly. Right, right. Or if you're old or whatever, they mm -hmm. still love you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, when an animal loves you, you know it's genuine. Right, when a right. When person loves you. You're not so sure. you got to wonder how much money you're giving them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, and, and animals, too, have a sense of... They can sense your emotion. You know, they can tell if you're sad. They can, t and they they actually come and start to try to comfort you. Oh yeah, we've yeah. always had horses. And, you know, oh horses okay. Are a good example of that. You know, if you're mm -hmm. feeling blue or something, they're they're just so mellow, and it's like they totally understand what you're going through, and they're comforting. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I've never. I. I I love, I love looking at horses. I've never been around horses. I've we've had you know cats and dogs, um, which I, I feel are similar in that way. You know that yeah. they they can sense. Um, but but yeah, just in in fact, a couple times I've said to people, which um, hasn't won me uh, uh, yeah. rewards for saying it, but I have sometimes said, you know, I'd rather spend time around animals sometimes than certain people. You know, because yeah. it just they're just. It, like you said, they're just unconditional love. So yeah, and they don't have an agenda. Mm -mm. If they don't like you, they'll let you know. Yep. Right away. <laughs> yeah. And if they like you, they'll let you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's simple. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go a, a little bit into this uh, untouchable book, and and, and I'm I'm very I, do, I wanted to thank you for being gracious enough to read that. Yeah. Um, because it, at the time, you know, right now, I, I don't know how much the fan base is, is talking about it still. Um, but I know that at the time when it came out, that again was split down the middle. People were very upset. And and um, I think yeah. you're aware, you know, Mr., uh, Tom Mesereau was is a supporter of the book as far as yeah. um, he believes, from my understanding, that um, the author of the book, who was not a fan of of Michael's, that's true. Um, yeah, and he came out believing, you know, 
I, it, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm about a little more than halfway through the book, so I haven't finished it yet. Um, but he, you know, Tom had mentioned that he comes out believing that he was not a pedophile, and he That's felt right. that that was very important. Yep. Um, and, and that is an important uh, thing for the book. Okay. Uh, the, the, my, my take on it when I was about a fourth of the way into the book, mm -hmm. I thought, this is way more information than we need. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's what's going to happen. You're going to have books out there that that contact everybody, and and in order right. to believe what everybody's saying, then you you have to think that they're that every one of those people are absolutely telling the truth. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, yep. and that's an assumption you just can't make. E exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And you know, and one of the things I know that um, I had read, I, as I've been reading, I read the notes. Um, the chapter notes too, because uh -huh. I want to find out what's where the sources were. Source, yep. Yeah, and I I noticed it, it. There was one portion of the notes. I don't remember where it was, but but um, Randall Sullivan states that he was actually having a hard time figuring out fact versus fiction because everyone he talked to had different stories and were you know conflicting. That's right. And I you know I found that too when I was yep. researching, and and that's where for me speaking with people like yourself and people that I can trust, that has come to help me greatly because I th if you talk to the wrong people, you're going to get the wrong stories. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the wrong the wrong viewpoint. And Absolutely. And there, like I said before, you know, this, that kind of misinformation is going to be around until the end of time. Mm -hmm. There are going to be people, there, there's going to be people who are born after Michael died, they're going to swear they knew him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> and do you, do you think that it's it's because you know it, it, he had risen so high that you know the, I mean humanity as a way it has a seems to have a sense of you know we're we're going to raise these people up and give them adulation and then as soon as they reach that point we get uncomfortable and we want to bring them of down. Of course, no, of course, because because we don't want any gods, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't want anybody who's bigger than us. Right, right. We want everybody on our own plane. Mm -hmm. We we love it when people are on their way up. We as Americans, we absolutely love that. Yeah, yeah. And then when that when they get to the top, we start questioning. You know, it's like I don't know if this guy was really worth all this. <laughs> right. And then and then you're eager to see them fall because right. now this proves these aren't perfect people. These aren't gods. These are just like us. Right. Right. And therefore, I'm not going to worship this god anymore. <laughs> and Mike, you know, Michael told me an interesting story. He mm -hmm. said, um, "Oh, Jesus, I can't think of the actor's name right now." But he did that. Uh, it was a Wolf Man or whatever, and he's done a whole bunch of movies. Spielberg used him. God. Oh. Um, I can't. I don't know why I can't. Oh gosh, I can't think of it either. But anyway, he's always been a great actor and everybody okay. loved working with him and everything else and then but then in that one year remember he had two he had one movie that was up for an oscar it wasn't kevin he, costner was it yes okay yes. okay and then kevin costner was up for an oscar too and then he had another project that was very successful and i forget what it was okay but michael said then all of a sudden in hollywood people were saying uh I don't know if this guy is as talented as he thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of success in one year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, you know, it all it all evens out. Yeah. And uh, and there's just so much misinformation that when I read things about Michael, I glean what I what I want, mm -hmm. and the rest I throw in the trash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because there are so many people that claim to know him so well or have had right. these awful business dealings or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all these people have an agenda, too, especially the money people. If they invested money, they were expecting to get a whole bunch back. Yeah. And, uh, and if they don't, then, then they're, <laughs> they're yeah. <held> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, and, no, and, and, Mike, you know, Michael... The longer he went in his life since I knew him, you know, he got more and more paranoid about things like that, people handling his business and and all that kind of stuff. And, you, you know, you can't blame him. No, no. Because yeah. everybody was after him. They wanted something mm -hmm. from him. Sure. And uh, I'll tell you, when you live a lifetime of that, because he was the, 
you know, he was the godfather of that family from the time he was about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. If anybody had a problem, they came to Michael. Oh, okay. And so he's been in that role his whole life. Yeah. People need something, they call okay. Michael. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when you spend your whole life doing that, God, that's got to get tiresome. Oh, yeah, because eventually you start, it, it drains you. Oh, of course it does. Yeah. And it, and, and it reduces you. The ability to, to to appreciate people, you know, mm -hmm. for, because you, they always want something. Oh yeah, yep. And uh, that just gets tiresome. Yeah, yeah. And then now on it. So in the book itself. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read my own writing. Here. All right. <laughs> um, so, were there certain certain things that that stood out for you that you think you thought like, okay, I, I want to clear this this up, or or you know, th this fact was true, or was there anything that like really stood out for you that while you were reading it that you thought, oh, this is something I've really got to, um, you know, I don't I don't think this story is accurate or anything. Nah, I just let those run over because there, there's so much in there. Okay. And and some of the things that are said, there's really no way of backing up and. And checking anything or okay. researching anything to find out, sure. you know what the situation really was. Okay. So uh, those kind of things, I, I just throw them away because they don't warrant my attention. I don't mm -hmm. think. Uh, okay. I know who Michael was. Right. Right. And uh, I'm not confused about it. Mm -hmm. And so when people say things, it doesn't really upset me because I expect that. Okay. Uh, it, you know, I would rather not hear it. Sure, sure. But I accept it because that's what people are going to do with mm -hmm. someone who was so world famous. Sure. As Michael was. And what about like? So, what would you say to people that you know, like, say the the general public that would be reading this book, and that that never met Michael and didn't know him? Um, how would you tell them to approach the book or anything that they read about him? Well, I I would say the same thing. You know, like, you know, you got to read this with your tongue in your cheek. Okay. You know, this uh, has a lot of things in it. Christ, the book's six hundred some pages. Uh, yeah, it's and, it's a uh, huge book. <laughs> yeah, there's an awful lot of stuff. Uh, I know if I was going to write my life, it'd probably be about ten, twelve pages. <laughs> so, so I I th I would differ, but I think you'd have a lot more than that. <laughs> But I just, I, I, I think that's what people should do, is you read it, and it makes good reading, I think, mm -hmm. you know, in general. Okay. If you're not attached to Michael, I think it makes good reading. Okay. And there are some things that are factual, other things you have to guess about, and other things that are just purely untrue. Okay. And so you have to use your own wisdom to separate those things out. I don't, I don't know if anybody actually can do that intelligently that didn't know him, but... Yeah. You know, that's all I can say about the book, and, and there's okay. way more information than we need. Yeah, it, it's very it's it's um it's very overwhelming to read it yep. because there's just so much in there, and that's why I've had to sort of well, I've, I've been trying to fit it in in between everything I'm doing, yeah. and I. I can only maybe read, you know, maybe a chapter at a time. I, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm impressed with you that you read it that as fast as you did because oh, I, yeah. I read it in just a few days. Yeah, <laughs> I because I, I I start reading it and all these things start going through my mind and I'm <laughs> no. and then I'm trying to take notes and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do that in the beginning. I was going to take notes. Okay. Of, of things along the book, but then yeah. I gave that up. I thought uh, I'm just going to read this thing and okay. Just think of it as another. Another book that wasn't written by Michael. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so there's nothing really, like you. I know you said that um, the uh, you, you know there's certain things that you knew were not true. Do you want to? Did you want to comment on those, or did you? Would you rather not? No, I'd rather not. Just leave it there, out. There are people that said things that you know use their names. Oh right, okay. I, so I got gotcha. you. Go sure. Back and that that starts another whole round. Of, yeah, I I agree. I agree. You know mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So okay. I wouldn't comment specifically. Mm -hmm. I just know there's a lot of untruths in that book. Okay. But I think you know it's in in uh, support of uh, Mr. Mesero mm -hmm. that I'm sure he liked the book because you know, you know Tom is an attorney. Right. And Tom wants to know everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's, he has natural curiosity. Mm-hmm. 
So he's going to like the book because if you think of the book as a whole, it's very complete. Right. Now, it doesn't mean that everything in there is true. Mm -hmm. But it's a very complete book. And, of course, the, you know, the uh, bottom line is that the guy realized that Michael is not a pedophile. Right, right, and that's, I know some some people in the fan base were upset because they said in interviews he he wasn't as clear about that as he was, I guess, in the book, because I, yeah. I, I still haven't gotten to that point in the book where he speaks on that, yeah. um, but um, but if, yeah, if, if he came away with that having not really been a fan, that's that's pretty important because obviously that was, that was the main thing that that really um that turn turned the thinking of the public not only as into you know what what Kevin Costner had to go through right but made him into where people thought he was a criminal that's right you know that's right so yeah. um and then the other um oh the other thing was i, I know a lot of, there was a lot of um the the drug references were very much all yeah. throughout the book. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I know that it, when we, you and I had spoken last time that yeah. you had mentioned that you never saw him under the influence of anything. Never, not ever, not any time of the day. We had, when I was with him the last time out in La Jolla, when I was there for, with him for two weeks, one night, because he had a gr fantastic wine cellar there, and uh, the guy had told Michael, he said, try this, I don't know, some kind of apricot wine or something. Okay. So we had a little glass of wine, Evie mm -hmm. and I and, and uh, Michael. Okay. Down there. That's it. That's it. Oh, wow. There wasn't any more alcohol. Yeah. You know, if Michael was drunk or on some kind of drug, he would know that because you can't have an intelligent conversation. If no. You're slurring your words. Right. Or, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And... You know, I'm not saying that Michael never used drugs to try to go to sleep. He probably, I'm sure he probably did. But I would never, ever think of Michael as a, as a drug addict. I just never, ever saw any, yeah, yeah. any evidence of that from being around him at all different times of the day and most of the nights. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. Yeah, and that's that's what's, it, that's one of the most important things, I think, that, that you had that you're able to, to speak on because of having been around him yeah. all that time because a lot of the people that claim these things d didn't have that kind of access to him yeah. um you know so it's it, you kind of wonder where that where that comes from well it, come, it comes from rumors you know mm -hmm. michael talk i mean people talked about michael all the time i'm sure yeah anybody who had met him or had any kind of dealings with him sure or anything else you know they would they would want to have things about Michael that nobody knew. <laughs> and right. so, you know, that's the way rumors get started. It's like somebody says something and then somebody adds something to it, and pretty soon it's, you know, it's crazy. Right, right. <laughs> so you yeah. just have to wonder, you know, about some of that stuff. Yeah. How truthful it is. Right, right. And it, I know, it, it kind of switching gears a little bit here, I, I know yeah. in, in our email um, you had shared a story with me, and I want to say it was Eddie Murphy yeah, and Michael yeah. at Neverland fighting over Whitney Houston, or do I have that right? Yeah. yeah. Do, do you mind sharing that here? Because I thought that was such a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, were, uh, we were, I was at the ranch, and we were riding on the new train that had been installed. And Max, the, uh, the little three-year-old chimp, was really afraid of the train. So we were riding up and down the track with uh, with Max. And okay. So Michael would start way in the back end of the train and we'd ride there. And then we'd move, keep moving up closer to the engine. And, you know, until he got used to the train. And eventually he did. He had a great time riding and they even rode with the engineer up there. Oh. <laughs> But anyway, Michael had planned to, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy was coming down to the ranch, and, and so Michael had planned, you know, the water balloons. When he'd come to the front door, you know, Michael would appear in a window over the door, and Eddie would get water ballooned. Oh. But <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, the, uh, the limo drove up while we were still on the train, <laughs> so we couldn't do the water balloons. Oh. 
<laughs> and so, so at, at dinner that night, uh, we were, and, and first of all, Eddie was really shy. I was oh. really surprised. Yeah. He came in, he was very quiet. Okay. And, and he sat down and played the piano. There was a grand piano sitting there in the house. And so he sat down and played that for, oh, quite a long time, maybe 20, 25 minutes. Oh, wow. And then, and then he got used to being around me, so then he was okay. You know? mm -hmm. But uh, then at dinner time, uh, he had he and Michael were sparring back and forth because of Whitney Houston. <laughs> they were both uh, apparently smitten by her. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so that was pretty funny. And then, then Eddie stood up and did ten minutes of Michael going door to door as a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be pretty funny because Eddie, oh, Eddie Murphy's was, funny. That was amazing. And yeah. Then, and then Michael had uh, the guy that ran the theater. He said, "Bring the chimps up." So he brought Max and Alex up. Alex uh, was a female. She was uh, three and a half years old. Max was three. Okay. So you know they, he dresses them up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Brought them up to the house, and they're running and playing in there. And they they're like little kids at first. They're real bluffed out, you know. Mm-hmm. But then, as time goes by, they warm up. Okay. Not so shy. Yeah. So they're being kind of kind of roughhousing it in there. So the the guy I forget his name, the guy from the theater, told them no. And boy, both Max and Alex stood up and going, "Say what? <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you exactly?" <laughs> they're very fussy about things like that. They wouldn't take orders from anybody except either Marvin or Michael. Oh wow. And so anyway, Max ended up in Michael's lap, and he was drinking out of Michael's water glass. Oh, and my gosh. Eddie was just appalled at that. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael said, hey, you know, Max is more likely to catch something from me yeah. than I am from him, which is true. So would he? So then would Michael drink from the glass after the, after? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, wow, that's funny. I, I, sometimes I'll, like, I, I have a glass of water. Yep. Um, that I'll leave out, you know, and I'm, I'll fall asleep or something, and and I'll wake up and one of my cats will be drinking the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, and <laughs> now I personally I go and throw the water out afterwards because oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my god. But so actually, so is it kind of like you know how they always say a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's? Is that exactly. the same with an yeah. ape? Okay. Yeah, and yeah, Michael was like that. You know, those chimps are like his kids. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And they were just more damn fun. I don't know if you've ever been around chimps or not. But no, I haven't. Oh, God. <laughs> they are great. They're just so much fun. Yeah. They're so much fun because they'll laugh and giggle and all that stuff, you know? Oh, really? They laugh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Alex. Like Alex fell in love with Lori. Alex was more reserved than Max. Okay. That was a female. Mm -hmm. So when we sit out in the yard out there, uh, Alex would come and curl up in Lori's lap. And she'd oh. lay on her back in Lori's lap. Yeah. And she, she wanted Lori to tickle her, tickle oh. her belly. Yeah. And so Lori would tickle her belly, and oh, God, she'd just laugh and laugh and laugh. Oh, wow. And Lori would take her hand away, and then Alex would reach up and grab her hand and put it back on her belly again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, come on, I want some more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I, oh, I mean, yeah. I've, I've seen them smile but i didn't know they actually laughed oh boy. wow yeah they do <laughs> they're great oh they're my really gosh a lot of fun yeah wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> now is there um do you do you feel like there were things that michael taught you like what it, what do you feel that you learned from him and what do you think he learned from you oh gosh i don't know if he learned anything from me i mean he <laughs> he did you know he revered artists yeah, yeah. He loved artists and painters and sculptors and all that stuff. He had, he had a deep love for that, which he got from Diana Ross, you know, when he okay. moved into her house. And yeah. She, she uh, got him started uh, recognizing what great art was. And et cetera. Okay. As far as what he taught me is just about everything. I mean, I'd, Michael is just the kind of person you would absolutely want for a son or a friend or a brother mm -hmm. or, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just the kind of guy he was. He was just, he was a true gentleman. He he just, uh, he just exemplified everything human beings should be. Mm-hmm, yeah. 
and he was terribly modest, you know. Uh, he really was. Yeah. Okay. And, and the, the amazing thing was he never changed. You know, I kind of met him when he was at his peak. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just starting his bad tour. Sure. And uh, he was really at his peak. And so, you know, I've been around other Hollywood people, but success does something to them. They... Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they kind of change. They kind of they're not so thoughtful anymore. Mm-hmm. They're much more narcissistic. Yeah. And they love to give money to charities if they can get some TV time out of it. Sure, sure. <laughs> right, right. It's not for the not for the right reasons necessarily. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Usually, uh, you know, their tax person will say, "Listen, we need to you know invest some money in some charities here." Right. But, uh, you know, Michael is just the opposite. You know, he would get upset if anybody would say something about something good that he did. Mm-hmm. I remember when I first met him, he'd given a check for, I think, 700000 to uh, the NAACP. Okay. And they wanted him to appear to present the check, which would be done on television. Oh, television. right, right. Okay. And he absolutely refused. And so they went and talked to Liz. Taylor. Okay. And she finally got him to do that. And he was absolutely crushed. And he told me, he said that, he said, if you do a charitable act and then you go tell people about it, mm-hmm. he said, then it's not about what you did, it's about you. True, yeah. And he said, so, so then it means nothing. Mm-hmm. You've taken everything special about it, you've taken that away. Yeah. So he never bragged about all the operations he did and all the children's wings on hospitals and orphanages and, you know, God, on and on and on. The the man gave like $300 million away. Wow. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's more than I make in a year. (laughs) Wow, yeah. (laughs) That's more than I, I make in a lifetime. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and so I, I just, he just taught me everything. He taught me, yeah. he taught me how a human being should be, how they should act mm-hmm. in the face of everything. He yeah. never changed. He never changed. Yeah. He didn't get, he didn't get a big head. He didn't become narcissistic. He didn't any of those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I never got that sense from, at least from you know talking to different people and and researching. It, yeah. it seemed like he remained constant, even no matter what he went through, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I know a lot, of, he, he he spoke a lot about, you know, in interviews and different things, he spoke a lot. He seemed to be a man of very deep faith and spirituality. Yes. And did did, did you ever have discussions with him about that? Did he? Because I know some people said he would talk with them about he would talk with them about God or bring up different spiritual type things. Yeah, yeah, we would do that. But you know, the one great thing about Michael was that he did he never tried to push his faith onto you. Okay, right. Like, you know, a lot of people that are really religious sure. are always trying somehow to convert you or mm-hmm. change the way you think or whatever. Yeah. Michael was not like that. Yeah. He really you know, he believed in the live and let live, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. You know, you're entitled to believe what you believe, and I'll believe what I believe. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, we did have religious uh, discussions. And, okay. And he was a very, I, I don't know if I'd call him religious. I would call him spiritual. Okay. I think that's a better word because I think, you know, he's thrown out of his religion. He was excommunicated. Oh, right, right. For his music, you know, mm-hmm. and for that, uh, you know, for talking about the undead. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so they 86 to him. Yeah, yeah. But I think he'd gotten to the point anyway where I'm not sure there was any special, you know, public religion that he subscribed to. Mm-hmm. He believed in a higher power. Yeah. He believed in God. Right, right. But he didn't necessarily believe in one way of presenting God. Okay. So yeah, I would I would call him spiritual, yeah. not religious. Okay. And uh, sorry, I'm just looking at my yep. 
questions here. Um, I know when you were saying that, it sparked something that I was going to ask you, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, well, um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll go into, it, as long as you have a few more minutes, I, ha I was going to go into some of the fan questions okay, that yeah. they sent. Um, okay, this is from Judy Hyde. She's from Minnesota, and she said, uh, she said, did you and Michael ever have deep conversations about life, celebrity, and the media, which I, I know you answered a little bit about that um, earlier in our interview here. Oh, yeah, we did. We had a lot of conversations <laughs> about that, <laughs> really a lot of them. And, you know, early on, you know, because the press was always saying negative things about Michael. Sure. And I asked him, I said, you know, why don't you say something? Speak up. You know, don't mm -hmm. let these bastards get away with this. Yeah. And he said, well, he said, you know, if you get in this business and and you, you know, you, you try to get to the top of what you're doing, he said, these people are always going to attack you. And he said, it just seems like if you speak up, that they, they're they even more eager to find bad things about you. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, you could do, like, talk shows or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, my God, no. He said, I'd never go on a talk show. And I said, why not? And he said, well, he said, you know, my life really isn't interesting. <laughs> He said, I, I just work a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. that's how he saw himself then. That's exactly like, how Oh, that's funny. Not, yeah. Not interesting enough to be interviewed. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that just floored me. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um. Oh, and, and I know, uh, and Judy also states, she said, we know Michael was a good father, and what did you wit witness that reinforces that? Oh, man, just everything. I mean, from the first time he brought uh, Prince home from the hospital, I mean, he was a full-time father. Yeah. You know, when you would think that, you know, and later on he did have, they were actually nanny teachers. And and oh, okay. I don't think Grace was ever considered to be a nanny in that sense. Oh, okay. But... Uh, but uh, he would just, he would do everything. You know, when, you know, when the child needed a bottle, they get, you know, he gave him the bottle. When mm -hmm. they woke up in the middle of the night, Michael took care of them. When they needed their pants changed, Michael did that. When they cried because they weren't feeling good, it was Michael that rocked them and walked them. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that was from the time they were born. Wow. He loved, he absolutely loved his kids. Mm-hmm. And, and it was just such a shame that, you know, after he got his family, that all that crap came up because, you know, that just took some of that joy away, that pure joy he had oh, about sure. him and children. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if, if things wouldn't have turned out like that, hell, he'd had more. He would have it, had a bunch. Oh, more children? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, cause yeah. He would have had a lot more children. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know in, I think it was a Bashir documentary he mentioned that, and then there was something else that he mentioned where he was, that he would have wanted to have more, and I don't remember if I read that somewhere, if it was, if, I'm trying oh. to remember, but, um, yeah. Yeah, he couldn't get enough kids. I mean, he would have <laughs> had a half of them. He would have enough to have his own school. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, you know, he just loved it, you know, with, he just loved little babies, you know, he would yeah. sneak into hospitals, you know, down around L.A., down there, and the nurses knew him, and oh, okay. he could go into the nursery and pick kids up and rock them and hold them. Aww. Yeah, he just, just loved little babies. Yeah. Now, did, the, uh, did, did he ever do that, and then one of the mothers would come by and be shocked that Michael Jackson was holding her baby? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh, no, you okay? He, he never said anything, but... <clears throat> okay. I'm just imagining somebody walking and thinking, am I seeing this right? What <laughs> <laughs> the hell's my Oh, I, I, oh, I remember, too, what I was going to say when you were talking about Michael being spiritual. Um, I, I don't know if you... If you've, if you're familiar with Richard Rossi, he was a um, he was a he's a he and his wife run um, a uh, uh, a healing ministry that Michael contacted I think after the trial. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and he, oh, so yeah, I, yeah, the name. Okay. okay. Yeah, and, and I remember one of the things that Richard said, and it kind of goes to what you were saying about, you know, Michael wouldn't force anything on anyone. He, yeah. Richard's quote, and I, I'm kind of, I, I don't know if I'm having, saying this exactly correctly, but he, he quoted something that said, you know, Michael was smart enough to point people to Jesus or to point people to, to faith or to God because yep. instead of trying to um, overwhelm them with... You know, uh, yeah. You know, what I'm saying like like yep. you were mentioning how some people are very um, pushy, pushy, right? Yep. And it turns people away. Then that's right. Yeah. 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 yeah Michael wasn't like that at all. Oh, okay. But Michael, in, in answer to kids, Michael mm -hmm. is just the best dad. And you know, I went to Prince's seventh birthday. Okay. And his mother and Reby came, but. They didn't actually go down to the birthday party because, you know, in the Jehovah's Witness. Oh, right, right. Okay. You can't have birthdays. You That's can't right. have Christmas. You mm -hmm. can't have any of those holidays. Okay. So they, they didn't actually go downstairs to the birthday, but the, but the maids in the house put up a bunch of balloons and all that kind of stuff was down the lower floor and off. Mm -hmm. There was a room next to the pool. Okay. And, and so that's where we did this. And, and uh, I was expecting some grand gifts, you know. Yeah. Prince never got anything that cost more than two or three dollars. Oh wow! That's it. Wow. <laughs> they were little, what I would call stocking stuffers, mm -hmm. like Play-Doh, and you know. Okay, so we got but, like simple, simple gifts that you just like kids. Yeah. Yep, and Prince was glad to have them. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That, well, that, you know, that was Michael's goal always was to to teach those kids to to respect the other people. Yeah. And to not think that simply because their father was famous, that uh, that they were also famous and privy to extra special care, you know, like okay. at the ranch when the kids were real little, you know, he, he would tell people, you know, you treat these kids like you would your own kid. If they do something wrong, say something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and don't go running to them every time they have a wish or. Every time they, you know, trip and fall down and okay. bang their knee or something, sure. you know, like these need to be kids, like regular kids. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, I know that they, they can't grow up like a regular kid in a regular family. Sure. But he said, I want to try to instill as much of that as I can. Yeah. So that shows great humility. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah, because, you know, a lot, but especially people that are, uh, you know, who are celebrities, a lot of yeah. them, you know, spoil their children or... Yeah. Or even even everyday parents, you know, just spoil their children and don't, yeah. you know, and... Well, you know, especially celebrities do that because if if you really look at it, they spend most of their time with a nanny. True, true, yeah. So the parents don't really see what's going on with the child mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. They only see portions of it. That's true. Yeah. So but they're Michael, not seeing the, re the result of spoiling them. Yeah. 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 You know, the kids were just, you know, like, and for TV or for, uh, you know, for your video games or for watching uh, a video or something, they had to earn that through their schoolwork. Okay, wow. They got they got points for their schoolwork. Oh, wow. So did Michael come up with that? That he was, did? Yeah, I think so. Oh, wow. And so when they could accumulate enough points, then they could watch video or they could spend an hour playing video games. Yeah. But That's a great to way to, yeah. It, it just wasn't free to them. They just couldn't mm -hmm. do that. And when they got up in the morning, what, before they came down, they picked up their room, made their bed. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow, yeah, that's... <laughs> how, many, how many kids do that? <laughs> yeah, not many. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And, it, and and that explains, too, why his kids are the way they are today, you know, why they're so responsible. And, yep. And, um, you know, you can tell by by watching them now even yep. that they were raised right. Oh, yeah. And, and I think it was like every Wednesday night, if they did well enough in school, then they could all go sleep with Michael. Oh. <laughs> so they all pile in his bed. I don't know if yeah. he got any sleep or not. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and they just, God, they look forward to that. That was just the best thing for them. Oh, yeah. They just thought that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a special treat, a sleepover. In the, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like a sleepover. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're funny. Yeah. Good or, kids. Yeah, they they definitely seem like it. I love those kids. Yeah. I know. It, it, um, Carol Hodges has the next question. I don't know where she's from. Okay. Um, but it says, uh, "What was it like simply sitting with Michael and talking about whatever came to mind? What was it like to be in his presence?" Well, you know, it's like I told you before. Uh, you know, I get I was around him so much that I got used to being around him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So we just hang out like a couple guys, but then he'd do something, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, maybe maybe a little three-step dance or or just something that yanked me back to reality, and all yeah. of a sudden, I, you know, I'm thinking, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here with Michael Jackson. Right. <laughs> and that, that dawned on me just so many times, and, mm-hmm. just, and just things like, you know, I would find out more things about Michael you know every time I was around him sure uh, he just became a larger and larger figure yeah you know as I got to know more and more about him and 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 you know he, he you know we'd have conversations on almost anything I just couldn't believe how he knew about so many different things oh yeah yeah I, I, I've heard that he was so well read and he oh, just oh man you know, no knew so much about so many different subjects. Even you uh, know, he would read medical guides or something oh, too, yeah, wouldn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. He had medical, all kinds of medical medical books. Oh my gosh. And and uh, he was he had a real interest in, in in medicine, and I'm not sure if he didn't know more than most GPs. Because <laughs> 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 he he was just an insatiable reader. He just oh, read wow. everything. Wow. Yeah.